You're watching Hegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. Oh, you didn't know? Welcome everybody to the Hot Tag. Oh. Brought to you by the Official Wrestling Museum. We are your hosts. I am Angel, and I'm joined by the Official Wrestling Museum's Hall of Famer, Mo Life. That's his name, folks. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here this week. Uh, before we jump into anything, we do want to send special condolences. Um, some people may not know who he is inside the wrestling world. We'll definitely know if you ever went to any ECW events or even TNA events, you would have seen him around doing security. Jerry, um, Jersey Joe uh, is what he was called. He recently passed away. Really great guy, uh, part of Atlas Security, and um, WWE Hall of Famer Pete Rose has also passed away. Now, typically, you know, we do mention if somebody passes and stuff that doesn't have anything to do with wrestling. Pete did have quite some stands at WrestleManias and let me get into the Hall of Fame. So our thoughts and prayers go out to both their families, friends, fans during this time. Um, so each and every week we try to get to as many questions as we can. Now the past few weeks we've been talking about we're trying to kill off the rest of the bucket so we can put all your brand new ones in. Last week we tried to read off a couple of new ones the week before as well. So people didn't think we were trying to avoid them. Um, but we kind of got a little carried away last week. We're, the amount that we read, so we didn't get to go into the bucket as much as we want. So we're hoping to finish off the bucket today of all the old questions to get the new ones in. While you're listening to us answer your questions at home or somebody else's questions while you're sitting there at home, check out that QR code, help us out. Um, make a National Pro Wrestling Day, it takes 10 seconds of your time, totally free to do. And if you're online, open up another tab, just search the official wrestlingmuseum.com and you go to National uh, Pro Wrestling Day, and that link is in there, the same thing as your QR code. Um, we were at Terracon not too long ago. Really, really great time. Um, the week that we're taping this right now, uh, we are starting to upload all the new Smile Up challenges. We got 37 brand new ones from the actors and the actresses that were in the house that day. Um, we are very thankful, very thankful for Terracon. Did you have a favorite? So, some stories, some of the experiences with them and what they would talk about, what the, the uh, Smile Up Challenge is about and what we do with the anti-bully rallies and their feedbacks were more to me than who actually oh, took them type I think, of thing. Well, no, I, uh, you know what? I think you did have a favorite without even realizing it. Who? Well, you, you, without you realizing it. I don't know his name. <laughs> but he was the guy from the original Night of the Living Dead. I fully support the oh, Smile yes. Up Challenge. Yes. Um, uh, I don't know his name. But he was the uh, I know you were gonna... brother in the original Night yes, of the Living Dead. Yes, he had the glasses and stuff. Yeah. In fact, I think from the days, I'm trying to remember how we decided we were going to upload them. I think Night of the Living Dead comes out tomorrow, okay. all those images and stuff. So let's jump in. Thank you guys for sending your questions. You can send them through YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, website, email. Send a bird, drop it off at the studio. We will answer your questions for you. All right. You got your spectacles? Yep. All right, All right. let's rock and roll. Frank, Our goal is to get through this bucket today. Frank from Braintree, Mass. Why do so many wrestlers mess up on AEW? <coughs> Sorry. Um, well, they do so much... Um, crazy spots, and I'm not going to say 
sloppy, but I mean, when you're taking those big high risks, you're not always gonna you're not always gonna connect. connect. I think that um, they probably, I mean, they're all talented. I'm not gonna say they're not. I'm not gonna sit here and knock them. I mean, they're there, and I'm sitting here at a table talking about them. So you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they do so much crazy stuff. You you're gonna have a, a crash and burn rate. You know, I mean, the, the amount of things they do, and and they're also trying to push the envelope and try to do more and more. Um, I wish they would do less and less because less is more. Yeah. Um, but that's well, another story. Tony Khan came out and said that he is not doing uh, long-term storylines no more. He's, he said that now for a while. And when you think in that type of equation from wrestlers um, that's been in the business for a while, that's trained by professionals that's been in the business for a while, you're, told, you're taught to tell a story. So if you're trying to tell a story that usually would take, say, four months and a 15-minute match, you're bound to have mix ups. You're bound to have, you know, all these type of uh, craziness. And another thing that I've noticed, I've been to AEW events myself. They never wipe down the ropes. They never retighten the ropes. They never do anything re to tighten the canvas. The amount that they tape throughout one session, you know, just not their live show, the, all the footage they tape, they never get back to that ring mm -hmm. and recondition that ring up. So that can lead to injuries as well, too. Also, uh, Luchasaurus, what's his, kill, what's his name now? Kill Switch. Kill Switch. You know, we're thinking about you. Did you hear what happened with him? No. So I his, I, I believe it's his fiance. If it, I, I, I think they were at that level. I don't think they're married. Found him, he was passed out and stuff. His auction level was down to like 80. Um, they end up having, uh, I think, double pneumonia or something, both lungs. Kill Switch? Yeah. So uh, he's, he's resting. I think he's still in the hospital as we speak. Um, of course, if you watch this on YouTube four months from now, he's probably not going to be in the hospital, hopefully. Um, and they say it's probably going to take him at least a good month to recuperate from this. So, and no time frame yet from when he gets back in the ring. So, you know, we're thinking about him. That, that's never something good. All right. Ash from Concord, New Hampshire. Do you see WWE slash TKO ever buying out AEW? If so, will they keep the companies going, the company going? No, I don't see them buying them out because what for? I mean, yeah. I see AEW eventually maybe going out of business at some point. I don't think WWE would buy them. They'll take what wrestlers they want from them. I could see them more buying out a TNA and incorporating yeah. that, but as far as AEW... No, I mean, what, well, there's no value in it. There's, they're, they're not yeah. drawing, they're not drawing right. houses. They're not drawing ratings. And there's, a, there's some talent there, yes, but I mean, they well, can they just gotta, take they, the talent. They got a lot of talent, absolutely. They monopolize the talent field. But I think you, it will be a better chance of seeing WWE folding before them buying out AEW. And I think if the way TKO was pushing you know, the envelopes of taking away shows and deducting show, you know, each year. They're looking to only do two, 200 live events. Great for the workers to be with families, not for the fans. Ticket prices are through the roof. WrestleMania ticket prices for two days, front row next year, 50000 That's ridiculous. These prices are being escalated by that. I think eventually it may turn out that they kind of fold up and then a new WWE under a new name approaches and uh, continues the, con the tradition. All right, Jared from Toledo, Ohio. Do you think Aces and Eights would have done, would have gotten over better in WWE? No, because Ooh. I think they did that with the DOA, Disciples of Apocalypse. Remember, that was a biker gang. That got nowhere. The reason why I say no is because um, WWF typically, their, their groups never go more than four people. Ace and Nates was Good basically, point. I don't know, what it was, like eight guys? Yeah, they had seven or eight people. I don't yeah. think Ace and Nates was horrible. I mean, it was a ripoff of uh, Sons of Anarchy and NWO mixed together. I don't think it was horrible, but I don't think it was great either. Um, Me? I don't think it would have, it would have, I don't think, uh, I don't think it would have gotten over better. I think, I think TNA did fine with it. I think TNA did really good with it. I think if they had the creative control they had with it with TNA, you know, in the sense of having some freedom with it, it definitely would have went over in WWE. And the reason for that is 
Bully Ray has done a phenomenal job. He can be on the mic. He makes you buy into it. You know, with Devon, Mr. Anna, it, the list just goes on with them. But they had guys that they can use as jobbers, you know, to put other talent over to keep a storyline going. But like you said, WWE doesn't want groups of more than four. So they would have had a they would have had a break. been a couple, but typically it's yeah. always about four people. And if you look at those groups, so once once they got groups that have more than four, you those other workers became just stand-ins. Yeah, you know what I mean? Watered down. Too many, too big. Jay, Jeff from Attleboro, Massachusetts. Do you see Gunther going into the WWE Hall of Fame years from now? Yeah, obviously. I mean he's already He's already deserved that spot. I mean, he's the longest reigning IC champ of all time. I mean, he's, I think they said like the guy's career in the WWF has been over 75% of the time. He's been a champion. So, yeah, when, whenever he decides to retire, if he retired tomorrow, he's a Hall of Famer now. So, yeah, I 100% I agree. If the only way. This guy will not make the Hall of Fame if he does something drastic within his yeah, life. Yeah, like, uh, that, <laughs> I'm that, never going to get yeah, yeah, this. That would definitely right. alter his course. He, he's definitely, he's, he's on a path to be a... a One of the greatest the uh, workers. I, he'll yeah. never be the greatest of all time, name-wise. No. Because he's not have the... But he can, yeah. he can be, like, the headliner. He's getting to that pot of a, a Hall of Fame ceremony. He really is. Okay. Wow, we're doing good to reach in that bucket yeah. today. Should WWE bring back midget wrestling? And that's from Bill from uh, Cranston, Rhode Island. I'm never going to say no to midgets. No. I love midgets. I just I saw one at Terracon. In fact, I was so disappointed at the one I saw at Terracon. I took his picture. And now the thing that, <laughs> bothered, the thing that makes me mad is that this midget was at Terracon, a horror convention. How do you, as a midget, not dress up as Chucky or the Leprechaun? And I'm so disappointed that he was just walking around with his little cane with the, with the armhole in it. He looked like Peter Dinklage. How do you not? He could have been the guy from Up 2. Up 2? No, Up. And then 2. Like, as in 2, like what you're saying. Oh, what he do you could mean? do this, too. Up, the movie, like, with the yeah. balloons? Yeah, he could be the old guy with that cane. No, because he looked like that. I have, so the funny thing is, I'm like, who are you talking about? I have that guy tattooed on my leg, and I still don't know. He, like, I've, never, I've only seen the movie once. It's not, so I have the tattoo not for the movie. So, and if we're not being politically correct by calling midgets, I'm don't life. take it the wrong way. I'm low-life. Get um, used to it. But, yeah, I would personally love to see them back. Um, I honestly would think they, they would be phenomenal at like house shows and stuff to keep the crowd going, to keep them Midgets engaged. Midgets is like, you know what it's I mean? one of those things, now I'm, you know, in all seriousness, midgets are that attraction. It's like, you know, say you have a match that it would be the, the Meltzer Five Star Classic and you have another one that's coming up that also would be another yep. fantastic match. You throw that midget match in the middle as the buffer. A midget, yeah. you know, or, or that's the match before the break or something like yeah. that. Definitely. I love midgets. Daria from Providence, Rhode Island. Has there ever been a time that someone peed themselves during a match? Oh, yeah. Many times. Yeah. There's, I'm, I'm not gonna, I can't think of specifics, but it happens. Well, I've both, heard. Both happen. All three happen. Throw one up, too. Yeah. Um, it, it's been documented. Like, Don't the Clown had an accident. Dobby Allen, the same, recently I had know. one. Um, I can't you know, think I of even know, my head. But. I know people that, even in training, has took in a bump and, you know what I mean? But it happens, you know, it it, happens. it's, it's it the body and hey, it happens in it all is what forms is. of life. Yep. So hopefully. Commentators too. I mean, they get to sit there the whole show. Yeah. It used to be said, didn't you know what? have like a Gatorade bottle? Oh, no, he would just go right in his pants. I heard different stories. diaper? I heard different stories <laughs> about the commentators. I give no lie, the, the crew outside the ring, like the camera crew, all that stuff, the timekeeper and the commentators, the most props, because they're out there for the whole entire show. Every worker that wrestles, every referee can get in and out. They have to stay right there that Kurt whole show. Henning, Kurt, Henning, uh, Kurt Henning dropped the deuce under the ring. That was more of a rib, though. <laughs> All right. Did you, have you ever tried bootios? Um, Tom from, man, I can't read today. Tom, I can't read ever. <laughs> Tom from Tiverton, Rhode Island? Hey, Tiverton. All right. 
Um, no, I have not tried booty O's. They probably taste like booty. So, I know people that buy them for the box and everything, but yeah. I've never tried them. I've heard they t kind of taste like a, a bootleg Cheerio. Yeah. I don't, I've never yeah. tried them. I have the blue box. I have they the tall blue box. They sell them at like FYE or I got the orange box and the figure box. Okay. So they've never been open. <laughs> they, um, people buy those for the box. So. Yeah. It's a lot of money for booty holes, too. Yeah, is it like eight, eight or nine dollars no, a box? When they first came out, it was like almost twenty something. Yeah, it's it's a it's a novelty. Yeah, they've seen you the coming. Box. Lisa from Lynn, Massachusetts. Will Chad Gable ever be a top champion? I don't think he'll ever win the heavyweight title, but you know mm. what? I I think when it's a set and done in his career, it's not going to matter that he never won the heavyweight title because his legacy is already established and formed. Yeah, like this guy is on I mean it doesn't matter like on Raw, it doesn't matter what who he's working. The, it's gonna be a great match. He's probably I've said he's the MVP of of Raw. Um, every match he has is great. He really is like to get that Wyatt family over, they used him to do it. Yeah. Uh, there's a reason they why the Wyatt him. family went for him first. <clears throat> they use him a lot to get people over. I kind of think of him a lot of times like Mr. Perfect. Seeing that you just brought him up, it kind of like, oh, wow, that kind of goes into this question a little bit. Because Perfect didn't need that spotlight in the main event spot. He was just, what he did was literally perfect. It told the story, did this job. Chad Gable was able to do the exact same thing, get himself out there. Um, I could see him as a world champion. And if it was the old school ways, as a passing champion from the end of the month. Yeah, I think you stole my read, just to let you know. What do you mean? I think it was my question. You just read that. No, you did the Chad Gable. I did Chad Gable? Yeah. Oh, okay. If never you, mind. I, if you want to read this one, I'd be glad. I mean, I, <laughs> man. Yeah, does, I give him credit. Okay. Ready? ready? I'm ready. Okay, guys, 10 minutes. <laughs> does a wrestler at a signing have the right to refuse to sign for someone or something, even if they are brought in by someone? Bobby from Lakewood, New Jersey. Hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean, hey, if if I'm a, if I'm sitting there <coughs> and someone brings in a, a picture of uh, I don't know me getting a deuce dropped on me or something, I don't know. Like for example, let's say, let's just say, like, okay, but let's just say it's you're like, right though. Yeah, let's just say I worked for WCW and WWF, and I'm I did a character in WCW that I couldn't stand. Maybe I don't want to sign for that character. Maybe I don't want to. I don't want to sign anything that I did. That I I hated that gimmick, and they forced me to do it. I was in a bad time in my life. Maybe I was having um, issues with with things in my life. That's a bad time in my life. I just don't want to support that. Maybe I'll sign something else for you. I think you can do it in a polite way. But yeah, you're, you're the person signing. You can refuse anything you want. I, I kind of got a vibe. Maybe this is from if they went to a meet and greet somewhere. And then we were told no, or maybe the person that took them in was told no. So it is kind of tough when it comes to, you know, that type of situation. But basically what you said, they do have the right. Sometimes it's copyright that they can't sign a name. Sometimes they don't oh, want to. Oh, that too. And then all the times, too, they know, you know, there's a <laughs> lot of people flipping. And, you know, for them to turn I around and be example. like. What? Ultimate Warrior. If someone came up with the self-destruction of Ultimate Warrior DVD, that was the DVD that made, they made. Right without him and kind of crapped all over him, he might be like, I'm not signing that. All that does is defame me. You know what I mean? He could turn that down. Like, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not signing that. You remember, it's, they're the ones that are there to... Um, Shawn Michaels with the Bret Hart midget, going back to midgets. Remember he brought the Bret Hart midget oh, out? Oh, yeah, yeah. What if, if they had a picture of that and someone said, hey, Bret, will you sign this? And Bret could be like, yeah, no. I'm right. Or, or, or maybe Bret Hart with a picture of Goldberg. All right, Peggy from Cranston, Rhode Island. What character did you enjoy more? Smoking Guns, Billy, Rockabilly, Billy, AB Billy Gun, or the AEW Billy Gun? AB? What? The BA Billy Gun. Or oh, the yeah. The AEW I, Billy so, Gun. Uh, Billy Gun, the best character he ever was was, was uh, Billy Gun from the New Age Outlaws. Yeah. Um, Billy I, Gun is t timeless. Yeah, um, but yeah. Billy Don't get Gunn me wrong. I I do enjoy him when I do watch AEW on AEW, but the BA Billy Gunn absolutely. Uh, Tim from uh, Fall River, Mass. Great place. Um, 
What, what are your yeah, we're going to be up there for uh, Trunk or Tree, I believe. Uh, what are your thoughts on Brother Love? Um, Brother Love worked. Ooh. I mean, so I've talked many times about how religion doesn't work in wrestling. It just doesn't. The reason why Brother Love worked somewhat is because it's fake religion. You know, he's a, he's a shyster. He's a scammer. So it's not fully... Ah, it's well, not, uh, yeah. You know. And yeah. Brother Love, <clears throat> number one, he's one of the writers or creators, creative guys, and they used him to further storylines with his Brother Love show. So Brother Love worked. Would he have yeah. worked as the... They originally had him be the Undertaker's manager. Would it have worked long term? No. No, I don't think so. He brought him out and then sold him to DiBiase. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Um, he he further was in the DiBiase, storyline. yeah. Uh, Paul Berra came in after. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think I think it's it Paul uh, Brother Love as a character. He got me confused when he said uh, the selling and Paul and stuff. Um, I think the gimmick is a very good character. If we were talking just the character, I think as the writing and the backstage stuff, I think he has a brilliant mind. I think he knows what he's doing and talking about. I also think too, when people are fast to judge the writers. You know, in the locker room and stuff like that, you are responsible for the work that you do. So if you give out crap for work or steal lines and stuff like that, well, then people are going to hear about it. I think Brother Love, I think Brother Love is really thorough with the business, and I think he has that respect for the business. He's remembered. So. The character is remembered 20, 30 years later. So, let's well, know we're doing good. Yeah. We're doing good. I'm reading this one right now. We might have to ask our own question. Yeah, I know. Ah, this is cool. All right. So this is Brett from North Province, Rhode Island. Is Carlito cool, cool in person? I've never met him, but I'll tell you what. I don't think he's cool on TV right now. He's like, it's almost, what? Like, it's almost like, why is he even there? He has, so the I, only thing he's done good is that. All right, I'm going to cut appearance. you off right now. First, he is cool. He's boring. Okay. He is very mellow in person, though, but he takes the time. He's very respectful. And he, awesome signer as well, too. I was going to say, how's his signing? Awesome signing as well, too. But let me, when how's you do. love signing? Not too shabby. Sometimes he misses the hot and stuff in it, but that's okay. Um, with Carlito, like, I think he really does fit Judgment Day right now. He's that oddball in there that you really don't know what's happening. And right now, I think they need that oddball because there's just so much going on. Especially, Dominic has toilet paper. Now, did you see that for 13 bucks? Yeah, I saw And it. it's selling like crazy. If anybody out there saying that Dominic Mysterio is not the top heel right now in WWE, you're an idiot. He's not. Plain and simple. Drew McIntyre is. Idiot. Uh, Drew is Drew's up there. You know why there. Drew McIntyre is okay. the top heel? Why? You know why? Because he dressed in black and no. said, why? No. Because he stole because a bracelet? He, because everything why? he says, he believes everything he says. Yep. And everything he says is legit. Okay. But he's also a heel. Yeah, absolutely right. But how long has Drew been playing the game? I'm not saying Drew, and Tom is not is, a, is, a good and act. Is Drew always a heel? From the time he walks out to the time he goes back to that curtain, is it always heel with him? No. He's more of a tweener. He's more of like that stone cold tweener character. With Dom, he's a straight heel. There is right now... It, put it this way, if they're making toilet paper with your face on it to sell, and it's selling, you're the top in the business right now on heels. All right. Do you think Kevin Owens, do you think Kevin Owens leaves WWE? Imagine if they put him in the bloodline. Who? Dom. Well, how, how would with that even Jacob work? With Jacob Fatu and all them stuff to say, yeah, I was one of you guys now. Yeah, but he's not, he, how would bring, he even fit? It would bring some attention to him. Do you think Kevin We're Owens doing good on this, folks. WWE for AEW? Derek White from Absolutely not. Parker, Colorado. Absolutely not. Um, I see I, right now. Oh, you went to first. Yeah, I see right now too many people are jumping ship over there. Too many people want to come back over here. And to see the injuries over there and to see how people aren't being used over there, I think Kevin Owens just loves the business, has a passion for the business. The, the workload is becoming less for him, so he can spend more time with his family. I say if he stays with a contract, he's staying with WWE. I, I wouldn't, if I was a wrestler, I wouldn't jump. Well, you're shaking it up. You only have one left. 
All right, it's suspense. I would have jumped because there's too many people over there. I just saw that the, the what is it, the maximum male models are over there? Yeah. What, how, I, I'm not, again, not knocking talent, but why would they be over there under, with that character, too? Like, the so no, I don't think he does. Bad. They I just didn't get he, over. I don't think he jumps, and I don't think he should. I don't, now, what are you going to do over there? I'm going to say You're gonna this. You're going to get lost in the shuffle. Right. So we actually just finished our bucket, folks, so we'll have all your brand new questions that you've been sending in over the past month or two. We are going to be putting them in there, and we're going to have it filled up for you guys. This is the last question of the original, and this is a pretty unique question to ask right now because it has some things tied to this man right here, okay? Tied Derek, to me? Yeah. Derek from Maine, that's all it says. What's your thoughts on Kofi Kingston? Oh, well, I love, you know, yeah. I, I love Kofi Kingston. Now, just, just know we're, we're running low on time. Yeah, so. I love Kofi Kingston. <laughs> I have a personal love for that guy. I'll never, ever, ever say anything bad about him. He's been around for quite a while. He was a guy who I thought never was going to make it to the top of the card, and then Kofi Mania hit, and it was awesome. Uh, it's too bad how it ended, and can he get to that level again? I'm not going to say that he won't, but I don't think, I don't think he will, unfortunately. But um, as far as Kofi goes, man, I just have a deep, deep uh, love for that guy. Yeah, I think Kofi Kingston, you know, even coming from around here, he has definitely proved himself. Um, there was definitely times that I didn't think he was going to be able to stay on that main roster. I thought they were going to give him that cut, and I was hoping they didn't, and I'm glad they didn't. Um, he just keeps showing every week that he can hold his own. He just had a, a clinic out there with Chad Gable. Yeah, that's Absolute absolutely. clinic. It was so great to, and refreshing to see that uh, Kofi going back and forth. You know, um, after, a few, after like a few years of the New Day just kind of treading water and like they just were there, the last maybe month, month and a half, really, it's like finally, it's good to see them back yeah, it with really storyline, you know? It really is. And speaking about going back, we were just at the carousel for the great the greatest town Toonie Pumpkins Festival this past weekend. We had a great time, huge turnout uh, for the Trunk or Treat event. Thank you for everybody for turning out. We will be returning back to the same area in the same location on the 19th. We're going to be a part of the parade and the Trunk or Treat festivities um, starting at Riverside Square, going to the carousel. The parade kicks off at 11, um, ending at the carousel, and we'll be signing autographs, taking pictures free of charge for 3 o'clock. And then the following day, we're going to be up in Fayhaven, Massachusetts at the rec uh, Recreational Center for the Family Fun Day. We'll be doing an anti-bully rally there and a trunk or treat as well. We're there from 10 to 1. Um, we're actually doing a bunch of other events uh, leading into those, which are the 19th and the 20th, um, that just based for the Boys and Girls Clubs, the rec centers that we're doing for us, just in-house um, events, so we're not unfortunately able to promote them, but we're glad to be a part of that. Make sure you guys check out R.I. Comic Con November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Two great names coming in, unbelievable talent. Thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys keep sending your questions in because without you, we can't do our job here. We'll just be sitting here looking handsome. So thank you guys very much, and you know what they say. You write the questions, and we got the answers. See you next week, folks.